Um, so, as I said, I wanted to put in some LED power cans, and I quite like these American DJ P64 LEDs. So all I need to do is just drag it in to, I'm going to use channel 93. And now that light's been fitted. Now one trick that I want to impart on you, because it really baffled me when I first started. When you're dragging into this top line here, I would drag my mouse accidentally up to these universe buttons and all my fixtures would disappear. And I was a bit shocked. I thought I'd broken it. But really, you've just got to make sure that you're just dragging in this box and see how easy it was to just pop up to the universe tab. Just make sure that you stay in the same universe. And I'm going to add these two power cans to the back wall. So, here they are, sitting in the middle of the room. Um, so let's see if we can't put them somewhere a little bit more useful. So I'm going to attach them to the trusses up here, I think. So, if we... Uh, oops. Rotate them 180, so that they're pointing down. Oh, another 8800, 180. Um, and we'll take a park in number one. So you just see I'm just clicking them here on the list to select them. And you can be much better than I am about uh, making more folders. So you might want to choose to put, see I've got all these active scans. You might want to have an active scan folder, park in folder. Um, but anyway. So we take them to the back wall. Oh, it looks like it's in line. No, well. And by the way, to move around, I'm just uh, clicking and holding. And then when I move my mouse, I'm able to rotate the camera. So we'll just put it up there. And that will be close enough to connect. Oops. And We'll put it along the side here so we get a nice wash on those people who are trying to hide up the back. Um, so we've got our other light which is sitting in the middle here and it's a really easy way to get a nice consistent spacing on your lights is if I just copy the values that I've already set by dragging around them. It's a bit of trial and error but this makes it a lot quicker. So I'm going to hit Control C, copy, and then copy that. So now we've got it there in line with each other perfectly. And then we want to get the height. So that, and copy that onto that fixture. And as you can see, now it's at the right height. And then what I should be able to do is that one's at 2.3, and that should be a measurement from the center. So if I leave that minus there, and I make this one at minus 2.3, then as you can see, we've got some fairly well evenly spaced lights. Cool. So those that is really how I've gone through um, adding these fixtures to. So these active scans in the middle, those four, they are just been done the same way. So I chose one and I placed it. And then I would choose the next one and you'll notice the rotation. Things are different as I've turned the lights so that they're all facing out on my little center truss here. And you should see when the show's running, that gives you a really nice um, spread of how all the lights are working. And it just keeps things looking nice and tidy and nice and professional. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've gone with some PARS uh, high and low on the back wall. Sorry, on the front wall behind the DJ. And we've got these nice sphere lights which have really quite a nice effect um, down either side. And I've got some 
lasers sitting here because you can't have a good rave without some lasers. And then in each of the corners, sorry, that light's really annoying. Um, we've got some moving heads here and here. And then we've got our park hands. Oh, and then I also have some nice um, intelligent spotlights which we use to light up the DJ. And then this light in the middle is a down spot um, for our DJ as well. So that's a pretty good rundown of how to um, get a bit of a stage setup and a lighting setup going in Lumi. Sorry, in X13D. So now I guess the next step is to go over to Lumi itself and show you how to control these and how to uh, actually work with them. So I'm just going to close the 3D visualizer for a minute and <coughs> open up Lumi DMX. Now then, um, the most important thing to remember is that our 3D simulator is simulating real life. So when we add in a fixture on our fixture panel, um, so I've added these two PAR64s, one on channel 93 and one on channel 100. That is not being replicated in um, Lumi, so I need to do that separately because um, as I was saying, you know, you need to take a real light and plug it into a channel in real life. So when we open up our, sorry, that's not what I want, our setup and patch, um, and we go add fixture in the software controller in Lumi DMX, you'll see we have the identical lights from um, X13D, the 3D simulator, without our two park hands that we've added in there. So what I need to do Let's go to American DJ and find my Power 64s that I just installed and put them on channels 93 and 100. So now um, our mixer, let me go down the end here. These are the two lights. And when we, I'm just going to turn it around so that we're looking at those two lights. And again, sorry for the low quality um, visuals. Remember, it does normally look like this, nice and pretty. But um, you can see my mouse is flickering because I'm also recording and my computer's not that nice. But let's just... No, no, I'm going to have to just keep it off advanced rendering for a minute. But we can go back and show you what it's looking like. So... Those are the two powers that we've added, and here we have them on our mixer. So I'm just going to show you how easy it is to play with them. So that's our dimmer there. They automatically are on when you go into the program so that you know that they're functioning. I'm we'll just get a bit more space here. But you can see that when I move my dimmer on the fader, a light in real life, or in this case in the 3D simulator, is going to come on. And there's both of them. So they're, they're um, PAR64s, so they're, they're fairly limited in what they do, but we can change the colors as well. As you can see. And actually, what I might do, because it's probably the easiest, is so we've got our mixer here with all the lights but as you can see it can get really really long so there's a really nice um, substitute that we've got which is the fixture control here so if we go you can see along here these are all the different types of lights that we've got so you remember I had several active scans um, so they're they're just a lot easier to operate in this way and trying to use multiple faders on a mixer. So we'll turn them all off again on the mixer. And I'm going to go to the fixture control to my P64 
Pass 64s. And here we have the demo. So, ah, ah, all right. No, I know. See, I am new. Um, important step though, when you want to control some fixtures using the fixture control, you have to select them by clicking when they're orange, they're selected. So you'll notice with only one of them selected, only one of them coming on. When I select them both, then they're going to be grumpy at me and not work for some reason. Here we go. All right. Um, <laughs> So, as you can see, we've got full control of a whole range of color, which is obviously pretty useful. Um, and yeah, I mean, really, that's, that's what you're limited to with a um, Par64, but that's, that's what the lights themselves do. And we'll just show you, just because it's a bit sad looking at it on this view. Um, Again, in advanced mode, how it really does look quite pretty, the colors. So, um, just take that off again. So that is how you can really simply um, start to test out your fixtures and make sure that they're working using this fixture control and just make sure that you highlight them so that they're both working or if you want to do one and then the other then it makes perfect sense too so what we might try and do now um, is oh why don't we just show you what a couple of the other lights can do as well now this fascinator is the one that's been annoying me a little bit and shining out over the stage. So my thought for that was to be a bit of a down spot on the DJ. So as you can see, we've got direct control of how it moves with the movement control and now our DJ is nice and lit up if we were to take the ambient light down we've got our highlighted DJ which is always good you want to be able to see people want to be able to see the show and again you can see it's looking rather nice in advanced mode um, and then this is the dimmer we can turn on a strobe if you want, which would be rather appropriate, but I'm not the biggest strobe fan for this show right now, I don't think, so we'll just leave it on. Um, and this light also has some really cool gobos, so these are go-betweens. So if we... Oh, we'll go back to our plot view. And... You'll be able to see oh. all right, it's easier if I move the light around. Oh, I think maybe only in advanced mode do you get the gobos. So we'll just test that out in a second. I'm putting it on the wall so that we can see it. And then yeah, so there's our gobo. Um, and we can change the stars or the thumbprint or whatever. And that's, you know, let's get some really nice effects going. So let's highlight up our DJ again. There we go. Oh, whoops. So this is much easier than I'm making it look. It's just that my computer is running a little bit slow because I'm recording. Um, so that's how fascinated. Then we've got these um, active scans. Now those I'm pretty sure are in the corners of the stage of the room. 